Good morning, everybody. What a wonderful morning it is. Happy Thursday morning. Happy Thursday morning. What an outstanding morning it is and what a great day it is going to be. I'm a little late, but uh, better late than never. We're going to get into morning manner. Welcome to morning manner. We're going to give uh, Facebook Live a couple of minutes or I should say a couple of seconds to uh, gather our audience and then we're going to get right into this morning's manner. You know, we're in this series about family, the COVID lifestyle and what are we doing with our family? How are we making it? Uh, I call it... Uh, the Quarantine Chronicles, if you will. The Quarantine Family Chronicles is what I'm calling it. Today, we move into uh, part four of that, episode four, series four, whatever word you want to use. That's what we're going to uh, share with today. Now, let me give you the flow. Let me give you the flow. It's always the text. It's always the talk. It's always the takeaway. It's always the text, the talk, and the takeaway. I'm going to give you a text from the scriptures. I'm going to give you some context. Then I'm going to give you three things that we're going to talk about. And then we're going to give you a takeaway that you can do now. What do, should you do? You got to give the hearts and the likes. The hearts and the likes are the Facebook live version of the amens. Amens. And you got to share. You got to share the manner. Share the manner. Don't keep it to yourself. Don't be greedy. The next thing you got to do, you got to follow or subscribe so you will know when I'm coming on to share the manner. Okay. And you can always, you can always put your comments in so that other people can see the revelation that you got. That's what we're going to do. Uh, how's everybody today? Let's get right into this morning's manner, knowing that what we're doing this whole week, we've been dealing with this chronicles of a quarantine family. What am I doing? What, what should be happening right now in my life as we are shuttered in place? Now, if you want to know all that we've been sharing, go back and uh, look at the other versions. They're on my Facebook page. They're also uh, on uh, the church's YouTube page. All right. So here we go. Here's the text. Deuteronomy 6, Deuteronomy 6, 6 through 9. Deuteronomy 6, 6 through 9. Get it. It says this. These commandments to be put upon your heart, impress them on your children. Talk to them about it. Sit at home, walk along the road, when you lie down, write them on your doorposts. What is going on in this text? This is the famous text. I got to give you context before I can begin to teach you what's going on in the text. Always got to know what it meant before you can know what it means. Okay, so what's happening in this text? The previous verse, verse 5 of the sixth chapter of Deuteronomy is called the Shema, S-H-E-M-A. That is the whole, that our God is one. Uh, our God, Israel, is one God, and we worship him. And that Shema is the core basis of the Israelite faith and ours. Uh, before then, uh, the people in the world had many gods, and Israel was the first nation that stepped up and says, we only have one God. And this is called the Shema. And now that they said it in the fifth verse, in the sixth verse, um, Moses is now saying, this is what you need to do with this belief, our core faith. This is what you got to do, Israel. Now, I want to give you one more piece. Deuteronomy is the sermon that Moses, the whole book, is the sermon that Moses preaches to the children of Israel before Joshua, they go into the promised land. So he's establishing them. He's grounding them in who God is. And notice this, notice this. And I want to give you uh, at least three steps, maybe more steps to a better family life, steps to a better family life. We already know that God is transmitted through the lens and lifestyle of our family. Already told you earlier, go back and check it out, about how God introduced God's self to Moses through the lens of family. Father, I am your father, the God of your Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now, let's get right into what's happening in this text. The first thing you got to grab is notice this. It starts with you. Moms, dads, aunts, uncles, TTs, cuz, whoever. You, the adult, it starts with you. Uh, Mimi, granddaddy, 
poppy, whatever you are, it starts with you. Notice that in the first, in that sixth verse, it says, put it on your heart. Put it on your heart. Now, you're stuck with the family right now. We're about to find out what's on your heart. Is fear in your heart? Because it's going to come out. Is watching a whole lot of television and what you're watching uh, on television, is, is that's what's on your heart? <clears throat> Excuse me. Because that's what's going to come out. He said, the first thing you need to do is take the Shema, take the core of our belief, put it on your heart, adults in the house. That's where it goes first, because whatever is in your heart will come out. Out of the heart flows what? The issues of life. I don't have to see what's on your mind. All I have to do is listen to your words. I know exactly what's on your mind and in your heart. You know, it says guard your heart. Well, guard it and put the word in it. So the first step or the first thing is that they tell us, put it in your heart. That's where it starts with you. Here's the second thing. The second thing is establish a routine. Establish a routine. Notice this. Impress. Notice these, these verbs. Notice the verbs in the text. Impress. Walk. Talk. Lie down. It's right there in the text. Deuteronomy 6, 6 through 9. Notice it gives you these verbs. Notice these key verbs. Impress, walk, talk, lie down. In other words, establish a routine as to how you deliver the word and the faith that you have to your children, to your grandchildren, to your nieces and nephews, to your cousins, whomever. You have to establish a routine because if you do not have a routine, you plan. Oh, I always say this. If you don't have a plan, you plan to fail. And if you shoot after some after nothing, you'll hit it every time. So therefore, you have to have a routine in which you have. Do you get up? What's your routine? The routine. Give him the first fruit of the day. Do you include others in the house? Do you have a devotional routine? Do you have a prayer routine when we have a meal together? Do the, do the kids know how to quote a Bible verse? The routine. What is the routine? Do you have a routine of going to church? Now, do you have a routine of watching the streaming? Whatever church you look at, do you have a routine of that? Notice it said, let me say it again before I move to the third thing. It says, impress, walk, talk, lie down. You get it first, then you take it and deliver it through a routine. Here's the third thing. The ninth verse going to knock you out with this verse here. The ninth verse says, write it on the doorpost, write it on the doorpost. In other words, in our going out and our coming in, we want to be able to see the house have a word over the house. Now, the lentil, the lentil or the doorpost. Remember, that's where they put the blood that they may come pass over. Now, there's two things that he's saying there that they need to do. In the eighth verse, he says, now put it on their forehead and put it on their hearts. It's called a phylacterate, a phylacterate. Now, I don't have time to get into a great deal of that, but that is where they would take a little verse. They would take a little verse, this Shema, put it in a little box. If you've seen any Orthodox Jews walk in the airport or what have you, you'll see this thing wrapped around them. You'll see their prayer shawl around them. And some of them in New York in particular, or in an Orthodox area, you'll see a little box on their head, the forehead, the form the where you do your thinking. Well, in other words, what does it say? You got to create, you have to create a legacy. You create that legacy by putting the word of God over the lintel or the doorpost. You're going out and you're coming in. That is anything that comes in this house got to adhere to the word of God. And anything that goes out of this house got to adhere to the word of God. Let me share this with you real quick. Remember when Jesus was going to heal uh, the soldier, um, uh, servant at the house. He came to Jesus and said, I have a servant that is at my house. And he is, uh, my servant is dying. Will you, will you then uh, uh, heal my servant? And Jesus says, well, let me come. And the soldier says, no, you don't have to come. Just say the word. Now, what that meant was, is that if you speak the word over my house, because if you come into my house, you take authority in my house. So you just put the word, speak that word in my house. It becomes the authority in my house. So in the ninth verse, in the eighth verse, I'm sorry, it says this. 
you put that phylacterate there, and in the ninth verse, it says, write it over the doorpost. What word, what is the vision in your house? What's the vision for your house? Does everybody know the vision in your house? Does everybody know that here is the word that we abide by in our house? These are steps to a better family life. Let me summarize. It starts with you. You establish a routine. Then you leave a legacy. What's your takeaway this morning? What's your takeaway this morning? Your takeaway is this. Your children, your teens, your grands, your cousins, whoever is in your house, don't get a choice when it comes down to God. Why in the world would you permit them to have a choice about church? They didn't have a choice. They, they didn't have a choice about uh, whether they were going to play sports. They did it. They chose that. They, you give them plenty of space to do all of those things. But when it comes to church, they got a choice. Stop. Just stop. Because the same choice you give them, they're going to flip that script on you. And you're going to wonder where in the world did this person come to, come from? It came from the fact that you gave them a choice. You'll take away, take away their choices and then have a better family life. How? By it starts with you, establish a routine, leave a legacy. The Lord be with you. May his face shine upon you, give you peace. I need you to share this, I need you to share this, do a watch party, uh, uh, lock me in so you can hear the final thing on tomorrow when we talk about this whole Chronicles of a COVID family uh, all shut in. And today uh, we're moving toward a better family life. God bless you. Have a great day. Share the manna. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. Give you peace. Bye now.